हरि 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 ओम तत्स हरि ओम तत्स जय गुरु जय गुरु कर्तव्यमस्ति न ममेह न किंचिदेव स्थातव्यमित्यदि मना भुवि संस्थितोस्मी कर्तव्यमस्ति न ममेह हि किंचिदेव स्थातव्यमित्यदि मना भुवि संस्थितोस्मी संशांतया सदद सुप्तधियैव वृत्या कार्यम करोमि न च किंचिदहं करोमि कार्यम करोमि न च किंचिदहं करोमि मदीय हृदयाकाशे सदानंदमयो कुरु उदेतु सततम सम्यक स्वात्मानंद प्रबोधक हरि 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 ओम तत्स जय गुरु जय गुरु वी शैल हैव एज यूशल द कोरस रिसाइटेशन थ्री टाइम्स ऑफ द ऑस्पीशियस मोनोसिलेबल ओम Omkara Interlock your fingers on your lap sit comfortably erect close your eyes open the mouth and the heart and join me wish and will in all earnestness and depth that this recitation should spread the entire globe showering its benedictions on all creatures take enough of breath so that even the upper lobe of the lungs feel the impact of it काशे दिवि भूमौ तथा काशे बहिरंतश्च मे विभु बहिरंतश्च मे विभु यो विभात्यवभासात्मा यो विभात्यवभासात्मा तस्मै सर्वात्मने नमः तस्मै सर्वात्मने नमः तस्मै सर्वात्मने नमः तस्मै सर्वात्मने नमः हां एस्टरडे वन ऑफ द लिसनर्स केम टू मी एंड सेड स्वामी जी व्हाट काइंड ऑफ ए फायरवर्क्स आर यू डिस्प्लेइंग See, yesterday, the discussion on Siddha Gita is something that all of you, it is in the book Quietude of the Mind. You should read, reflect over it. It will cut short and reduce the infinite world into no other than your own mind's ripples. What did I say? The entire world are, is ripples in your mind. there is no object you can desire there is no object at all 
because everything is an imprint in your mind if everything is in as an imprint your child your body your wife your husband your house your car the entire world elephant sun moon everything is imprinted the sun is i think 140 million kilometers or so away from here i am subject to correction are you seeing the sun ha huh? the sun which is rising there why are you keeping it you cannot see you are only seeing a refracted version of the sun even that sun are you seeing you are only seeing an imprint which your mind has made in your mind tell me the imprint of the mind is it mental or material mental. the mind being subjective the imprint is subjective or objective have you got any two answers for this be intelligent my dear souls you are already intelligent use it properly so this siddha gita tells you drishtra drishya samayoga whenever you have an experience whenever you have pleasantness delight joy and comfort tell me who produces it what produces it where i like this it gives me delight do you mean to say this object matter produces the delight delight it is matter it does not have any power or potential to cause an experience even a sleeping body cannot cause an experience you gently open the eyes of a deep sleeper show a bunch of flowers take away the flowers allow the eyelids to close ask him the next day have you seen the bunch what will be the answer no. so even a sleeping body which is not dead it is not capable of seeing so the entire seeing process is inside the body it is not in the material plane at all it is taking place in the consciousness plane so there what happens the consciousness inside you suddenly decided to see so it became the seer after becoming the seer it initiates the seeing process seeing process belongs to the seer not to the seen am i clear yes. so the seer initiates the seeing process as a result of which the outcome the seen takes place tell me where is it taking place it is inside the body not not in the mass of the body inside the body where the so called mind consciousness is there now you tell me drishtr darshana drishyani tyaktva vasanaya saha i explained it yesterday but i don't think you have in thought about have you thought over it yes. see you are desiring many objects are you actually desiring many objects or all your desires are for the mental imprints of the objects based upon the mental imprints of the objects all the mental imprints are mental or bodily they are mental in the mental imprint is there anything besides the mind boliye na thoda when the mind produces an imprint that imprint does not have a content besides the mind different from the mind so all your desires of the mind are for what thoda khol kar boliye na all the desires of the mind are for its own imprints where there is nothing besides the mind so are the desires meaningful or ridiculous boliye na ha i am wrenching you with knowledge wrenching you with knowledge desires have no meaning are you true to this knowledge yes. will you work on this discrimination yes. so he says tyaktva vasanaya saha 
ఐ ఆమ్ అబాండనింగ్ దృష్ట దర్శన దృశ్యాన్ని ఆల్ దీస్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్స్ ఆర్ ద ఆబ్జెక్ట్స్ ఆర్ సబ్జెక్టివ్ ఇంప్రింట్స్ బీయింగ్ సబ్జెక్టివ్ ఇంప్రింట్స్ ఈస్ దేర్ ఎనిథింగ్ బిసైడ్స్ ద సబ్జెక్ట్ నాట్ యువర్ హెడ్ ఈస్ దేర్ ఎనిథింగ్ బిసైడ్స్ ద సబ్జెక్ట్ so everything that you have is subjective 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 now do you understand what is meant by advaya knowledge the entire object knowledge now we have found and ascertained that it is no other than a display of the subject and that too in the subject horizon not in the object horizon or domain is it clear ha huh? how can you escape this knowledge this subject presence is infinite in all its potentials infinite it can create anything uncreate anything and bring about changes in what is created that is why you have special manifestation sometimes somewhere i have a devotee a very good disciple called rajamal <coughs> sometimes she goes to guruvayur temple one day she went to guruvayur temple there was a lot of crowd so she went inside to a certain distance and was about to come back suddenly a brahmin boy intercepted her why are you going back because it is too much crowded after having come here are you going to return without seeing guru ayurappan does not matter at all whether i see him or do not see him i am a disciple of swami bhumananda tirtha therefore i don't make any differences at all i have come more out of a custom and manners oh bhumananda swami that boy was saying oh he is guru ayurappan himself now i will take you then he said i will take you in spite of the crowd he took her showed everything and meanwhile she asked him who are you he said i am a person working as an assistant to the chief priest then the boy disappeared she understood that it was not a real phenomenon so she went to the office and asked is there an assistant by such and such a name for the chief priest not at all but such phenomena take place here now this is what you call a very special manifestation there was an old widowed lady whom i used to call chitti that means mother's younger sister she wanted me to call she was going all alone to different places etc i was concerned so i told chitti wherever you go you will have a special protection i bless you i said so one day she went to shabrimale shabrimale as you climb towards the end of it it is very steep so she was not young she was quite old not very old so she started panting and finding it difficult suddenly a boy appeared there a boy appeared there and then supported her from the back she was finding it very easy to climb she climbed 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 the 18 steps and stood before the lord then she felt this is not an ordinary boy where from has he come boy disappeared nowhere he was to be seen this is what i am saying it can create anything it can uncreate anything it can bring about changes also see we are discussing knowledge you should understand this knowledge cannot be questioned by science because this is based upon the canons of observation and inference which are the canons for objective sciences also they may use telescope and microscope we don't use it but we are also making observances observations and on the basis we are arriving at inferences so drishta darshana drishyani tyaktva vasanaya sah if you understand that the drashta the drishya and the darshana all are three all the three are inner manifestations is it clear 
they are inner manifestations from out of what from out of one source that that thinking substance that substance suddenly becomes the thinker gives rise to thinking and produces the outcome called thought so they say we cleverly avoid the tripudi the triplet drashta darshana and drishya along with all the desires associated with them even spiritual desires we avoid that i want liberation is also a desire that also we are avoiding darshana prathama bhasam our focus is on that source which gives rise to the triple what which gives rise to the triple atmanam samubhasmahe that is the atma dvayor madhya gadam nityam asti nasti idi pakshayo prakashanam prakashyanam atmanam samubhasmahe asti nasti idi pakshayo i say this water pad is there after removing it i say it's not there in both cases i have looked at the same place when it was there i saw it i did not see the ground here when i removed it this also was visible whenever there is asti yes exists no it does not exist in between there is this factor which distinguishes the two is it not huh yes say a person believes in god another person does not believe in god in both the belief and the disbelief the believer and disbeliever are the same they are there i believe and i do not believe so in the believing and disbelieving what is commonly present it is on the basis of the i that you say believe and do not believe and what is actually god this i see arthad arthandaram chitte yadi madhye tu ya sthidihi nirastha mananakara sa swarupa sthidi smrata this is another words from yoga vasishta ramayana arthad arthandaram chitte yadi madhye tu ya sthidihi when the mind leaves a thought and it goes to another thought in between the thought it has left and the thought it is going to take in between in between there is a middle presence that presence is such that nirastha mananakara where there is no thinking taking place one thought is left another thought is yet to be had so in between the two there is a no thought state that is the swarupa of the soul sa swarupa sthiti smrata what do you think of our scriptures a 16 year old boy is being told by vasishta deva how can you say that we don't know we are not able to get told of it i have made a powerpoint i wanted to make one or two more but nobody is there to help me to make the powerpoint this somehow i sat with padmagar and finally it came in the manner almost what i wanted aravind see throughout our scriptures and scriptural narrations and discussions you will find three are the constituents of the whole discussion one is the human personality itself which is a composite what did i say the composite human personality 
None of you knows what it is. We have to analyze it and understand what is our personality. I am not speaking about the body which is a subject for medicine. But the whole personality becomes animated and activated only because of the inner presence, inner personality. About the inner personality, its nature, its character, its potential, its measure, its magnitude, majesty, magnificence, nobody knows. So human personality is one subject of discussion. The complexity of the world and the complex world is another subject. The third is interaction between the two. By these three, don't you think our whole life is covered? Huh? You are interacting with the world. You remain the same as the interacting subject. The objects alone become different persons, places and events. And the interaction between two, where from does it proceed? Is it proceeding from the subject? You are seeing a tree. Is the seeing proceeding from the tree or from you? And where is it subsisting? On me. Where is it terminating? So where is the external emphasis? It originates from you, subsists on you, it terminates in you. So where is externality at all? But the word external we are using. The word external is only a notional factor. Whatever the mind produces is notional. It says gross, it says subtle, it says God, it says dog. All these are notional. So external and internal are only notional presences, not real presences. Where is that? Where is the PowerPoint? No, not this one, the other one. Huh. <coughs> See, I told you that our life is interactional. All the interactions proceed from us. They subsist on us and they also conclude in us. Now here is a diagram which shows here is the person who is at the center, so to say. He is employing his senses. A person is interacting with the world. How is he interacting? The mind employs the five senses and these senses are interacting. All interactions are in the form of contacts. What? Only when the objects contact the senses, the interaction takes place. The senses are perpetually seated on your body. They don't exit from the body at all. Invariably, the objects also do not leave from their position. Say, I see a tree. The tree doesn't come to me. I don't go to the tree. The eyes are fixed on the body. So, the contacts are taking place at the level of the senses. In the case of sight, it is easily understood. In which manner? The light rays reflected from the object come and touch the cornea. When the cornea is touched, it produces a sensation. That sensation is sight. See? 
in our interactions the maximum will be visual do you agree the next will be sound and further to it will be will be taste or touch where is that smell smell then touch and finally taste touch is in the whole body smell it can come anywhere the snow nose is able to understand so you will find eyes maximum i don't think there is an eye specialist here an eye specialist told me that the far point of the eye is infinity if you place a sizable object at infinite distance the naked eye will be able to see it how are we seeing the stars so what do you think of the capacity of the eye and tell me who generated and formed the eye anybody external the fetus itself developed the eye by virtue of its own inlying power if it can give rise to a pair of small eyes gifted with the capacity to see infinite distances what do you think of the source answer me ha huh? do you require any other proof to say that you hold infinite potential and magnitude within your body answer me baba no why are you stingy just see in about 7 months or 6 months the fetus grows into a full baby and that baby is able to interact with the sun moon stars etc with, with the body what do, what do you think of it so the interaction takes place at the level of the senses by virtue of contact the moment the interaction takes place it does not produce the reaction called pleasant or unpleasant they trickle down to the mind and when they trickle down to the mind there the interactional sensations are classified as happiness and unhappiness pleasantness and unpleasantness so you tell me our five senses are so powerful that they are able to reduce the infinite plurality of the world into a mere five where is the plurality gone now my dear world you may be anything but my five senses reduce you to five sensations and these sensations are not coming from you they are generated by my own senses and brain whenever there is a contact electrical pulses are sent by the organ to the brain center and in the brain center you have experience and knowledge the cornea doesn't do anything it only receives the contact and responds to it by sending electrical pulses to the brain now in the mind level it is sukha and dukha do they remain there no they trickle further down when you go to sleep both disappear and here it is a zero now tell me what is the analysis of your human personality i am capable of i am capable of generating five sensations in the sensory level reducing them into two sukha and dukha and i further reduce them into a zero when i go to sleep tell me what is your capacity now this is why gita says indriyani paranyahu indriye bhya param manaha manasastu para buddhi yo buddhe paradastu sah your senses are superior to the objects the mind is superior to the senses and superior to the mind buddhi and superior still is the soul now you tell me especially my dear girl are you containing within your personality everything in your personality is it superior to the world objects or inferior ha huh? 
your senses are superior mind is still buddhi is still and the atma is supermost we are carrying such a personality why do you yield before this world why are you pleading before whom even before god we have nothing to plead my dear god i thank you you have created me as a human and that is more than sufficient for me i want nothing else now when it goes into the central position here the whole wakefulness arises from here it is the sleeping man who wakes up so the waking up is done by the sleep and the whole wakefulness is delivered off by the sleep do you agree or disagree ha boli ana thoda ha no from there you see what is the dimension we cannot draw it will go like this i wake up i activate the mind mind activates the senses up to this it is bodily then the rest of the things are received received so what do i say i say that the entire wakefulness is an expression and extension of sleep do you agree or disagree it's an expression and extension of sleep please show the other uh, other diagram i was just show the uh, show the earlier one once again arvind see i call it noumenal oneness it is transcendence new noumenal oneness transcendence now this is the inner subjectivity subjectivity all the other things are objectivity i don't know whether in english there is such an expression but i have coined them objectivity and subjectivity it is from the subject that the objectivity is formed it derives its existence from the subject everything exists in space when i ask you where space exists do you have an answer but when you dream what happens a dream world is generated for the dream world to be there must be dream space tell me where from it has evolved from the sleeper so we have found the source of space also now now let us go to the other one see here it is a diagram which tells you what is superior to what what is written there oh all together five senses are there these five senses these senses control the so called world the infinite plurality is reduced five fold so imagine the power of the senses before the widespread world five senses all above the neck the whole thing is reduced into five so the senses are superior to the objects and mind employs them otherwise the senses are ineffective so the mind is superior to the senses the intelligence has to give direction the data analysis is done by the intelligence and assessments and conclusions are arrived at by it and it passes the information to the mind for the mind to act upon so the intelligence is superior to the mind and still superior is the soul what is your evaluation about you now tell me on the one hand the world and on the other hand included in the world our body though our body is included in the world we are not included ha huh? yes. what though our body is included as a world object what is inside the body that is not included in this world are you able to follow me ha thoda boli na what is this my dear world 
you are the proper my body is your property i agree but whatever the body hosts in the way of the mind intelligence and the soul they are not your product you cannot find it in the earth in the water in the air in the fire and in the sky where is it you tell me except in a living body you cannot find it and in all other bodies non human bodies no examination can be done inside the body so krishna says at one point of time uddhava i made a number of bodies which are they no legged single legged two legged three legged four legged and multi legged but i was not happy when i created the human body i was fulfilled you know why atra mam margayandyadha yukta hetu bhirishwaram grihyamanair gunair lingaihi agrahya manumanatah i wish all of you are discreet enough to understand these statements atra mam here in this human body mam margayandi they are inquiring into me into god into the supreme into the supreme reality adha very well only in the human body you can conduct an inner examination you will be able to understand something called the mind something called the intelligence and the dimensions which they represent you go along with a dog for a walk whatever you have seen mr dog also has seen and you come back you will tie it or put it in the cage and it will never think about whatever it has seen maybe you have seen many things over which you will just like newton saw an apple fall and one year he thought about it and then discovered force of gravity but the dog cannot do it only here you have the power of speech the power of thinking the power of sharing as a result of which you can inquire into the inner horizon into the inner domain grihyamanair gunair lingaihi agrahyam anumanatah using the senses you observe the external world after having observed whatever data or figures you get compile them properly compare and contrast and develop your reasoning as a result of the reasoning arrive at what is god what is soul what is the supreme reality our senses are to show to show the objectivity see them well and think about it how it has sprung where from it has emerged where is the root cause this examination can be conducted only in the human body so after constructing the human body and maybe designing it i felt fulfilled he says are you following me ye acha hai na na acha nahi hai suniye na this is india atra mam margayandyadha yukta hetu bhirishwaram grihyamanair gunair lingaihi agrahya manumanadah the whole ishwara is enquired into if people have found a god they have never found a god in any place outside they have only found him ha dharmasya tattvam nihitam guhaya the supreme truth is encased in a guha in a cave buddhi is your guha brain is your guha <coughs> now you can take it let me fix the mic
the siddha gita continues there are a number of verses you can see them from the quietude of the mind i will read only one uthidan uthidan edan indriyahin punah punah hanyat viveka dandena vajrene vahirgirin see our body what is our body our body is a seat for the senses we are nourishing our body so that our senses will remain functional and sensitive the purpose of feeding the body is to enable the senses to remain and function so we have senses these senses are what perceive the objects but along with the perception the senses have the power to drag the mind away so they are like actually hissing cobras what indriyahin ahi means sarpa uthidan uthidan edan every time the sense rises rises like the cobra spreading the hood whatever you see there is an urge to get attracted to it whatever you hear oh there are five animals each of which is attached to a particular sensory organ all of them die because of the attraction in man five are altogether there so if the other creatures die once you should die five times boliye na thoda i am not reciting the verse it takes time it is from vivega chudamani <coughs> so uthidan uthidan edan indriyahin punah punah hanyat viveka dandena vajrene vahirgiri just like indra lord indra uses the thunderbolt to hit the top of peaks and mountains you should beat them with your viveka danda the rod of discrimination vasishta now and then in a summarizing manner he gives synoptic statements synopsis one is this you all think it is difficult it is difficult it is not at all difficult provided you give time and make effort vijare yadhiya satyam asatyam hi parityaja abaddho baddha ityuktva kim mudha parishojasi he asked rama the 16 year old rama my dear rama using your intelligence you contemplate only upon satya vicharaya dhiya satyam boliye vicharaya dhiya satyam you don't have a good voice why don't you use it full vicharaya dhiya vicharaya satyam vicharaya satyam asatyam hi parityaja asatyam hi parityaja abaddho baddha ityuktva abaddho baddha ityuktva kim mudha parishojasi kim mudha parishojasi where will you find such endearing songs See, it was sung in Treta Yuga, and in Narayana Ashram at Abhavanam for a retreat, it is being re-sung. What do you think of our people? They did not waste it or lose it. Every generation, somebody took the trouble of learning, reading, re-reading, understanding, relating, explaining, disseminating. and some people lend their ears and hearts to it this is why india is great not for any other reason this magnificence of our heart the majesty of our intelligence the innocence of our mind it is something supreme all of them also had world attractions in spite of it everyone who has come to the ashram they have optionally left the world i don't know why you would ask them why did they leave 
they had everything that the others have still they decided whenever people come here to join us i say you come waving your hands have nothing simply come if you have half food we will give you first to you and then only eat if we have plenty share the plentifulness if we have scantiness that share that you come here with nothing this is what we want see every every generation such people were there vichara yadhiya satyam asatyam hi parityaja abaddho baddha ityuktva you are saying i am bound i am afflicted what does rama say i am is the i ever afflicted boliye na no or is the i witnessing the affliction who is afflicted abaddho you are not bound at all baddha ityuktva i am bound i am bound that is why he say bondage is mental intellectual shackles they are the shackles provided by the mind in a state of ignorance and delusion actually you are free you are free you don't have to be free you are already free is not the space free though four other elements are there within the womb of space is the space the least affected or tainted by the other four no. similarly your soul is far more subtle than space can it be affected by the mind by the intelligence by the body by the mouth speaking or eyes seeing or ears hearing can it be affected by the mind thinking can it be affected by the intelligence arguing i say it is unaffectable it is unaffected you don't have to make it so it's already there you only have to understand it understand it abaddho baddha ityuktva kim mudha parishochasi kim mudha parishochasi unnecessarily in vain you are suffering you are suffering you are suffering the world will continue to be what it is you will continue to be what you are we have not come here so much to change the world the most ancient world consisted of panchabhudas even now the same panchabhudas are there they have never changed at all it is like fashions on the dress what is that either it will come up here or it will go up here <laughs> nothing more than that even now i am asking our women are you wearing a dress to cover your body or to show your body this they must explain their necks are so deeply cut i don't know how the husbands like this they have no idea dress is supposed to cover the body not show the body if you want to show the body be naked that is the best form of dress so ascetics wear it we are considered to be nude we are called chidambarastha what we wear sky and also chidakasha for our dress so abaddho baddha ityuktva kim mudha parishochasi bandho hi vasana bandho mokshasya vasana akshaya vasanam tvam parityajya mokshaarthitvam abityaja at least one or two will grasp what i say what bandho hi vasana bandho the word vasana means desire bondage is actually the bondage by desires the moment you foster desire you agree and admit that i am not complete i want to get that object only in the company of that object i will be full so how you have admitted your slavery the moment you court your desire that is bondage moksha syad vasana akshaya liberation results from the decline and extinction of desires vasanam tum parityajya abandon your desires rama mokshaarthitvam abityaja after leaving the desires do not foster the desire for liberation also you are liberated leave it 
what more do you want? ये होगा या नहीं होगा तो क्यों नहीं होगा इट इज फॉर ह्यूमन बींग्स नैष्कर्मेण न तस्थो न तस्थोस्ति कर्म भी न सधि जवाभ्याम वर्वासन मन नैष्कर्म्या इज द स्पिरीचुअल सिद्धि दट पीपल एम एट गुड साधका इट इज अ स्टेट वेर यू अंडरस्टैंड ई हेव नथिंग टू डू इन द वे ऑफ गेटिंग एनी अचीवमेंट सो ई हेव नथिंग टू गिव एंड नथिंग टू टेक so all your actions become unnecessary not that you will not be moving and acting about so that naishkarmya of what use is that na tasyartho sti karma bhi by a variety of activities you pursue also what is there to be attained na samadhi jabhyam va say that न समाधि जपाभ्याम वाधि जपाभ्याम वा मन यसन मन इवन समाधि एंड जपा हैव नो पर्पस एट ऑल हूज माइंड इज फ्री ऑफ डिसे सुनिए ना सुनिए ना even to listen to it is most fortunate helped by the punya earned in a number of lives by your predecessors alone a child will be born in a family interested in listening to this kind of an exposure naishkarmena na tasyartho na tasyartho sti karma bhi na samadhi japabhyam va yasya nirvasanam manah how will the desire for samyagalokanat satyat vasana praviliyade vasana vilaye chetah shamyadi asneha deepavad samyagalokanat satyat say that सम्यकालोकनाथ सत्याद सम्यकालोकनाथ सत्याद वासना प्रविलीयते वासना प्रविलीयते वासना विलये चेतः वासना विलये चेतः शाम्यत्यस्नेह दीपवद शाम्यत्यस्नेह दीपवद सम्यगालोकना यू हैव टू सी द ट्रूथ रिपीटेडली व्हाट डू यू मेक इट बाय सीइंग द ट्रूथ ट्रूथ कैन नॉट बी सीन इट कैन ओनली बी कॉम्प्रिहेंडेड सो इन द लेवल ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस यू हैव टू रिपीटेडली enquire about it contemplate upon it reason about it you should spend time in the truthful introspection that is the sadhana what truthful introspection and the introspection i describe as infusional introspection say infusional introspection all of you are given into introspection you introspect over the objects of the world here the subject of introspection is the soul the supreme truth so the intention of introspection is to infuse changes reformations refinement purity etc in your very mind and intelligence spend some time for it purify your mind more perceptive do introspection when you do repeatedly think about it you will the, the intelligence will grow All these shastric sentences are there. Samyaga alogana satyat vasana praviliyade. So repeatedly think about the supreme truth. For thinking, Bhagavad Gita helps you. Don't think in an half-assed manner. Take proper shlokas, whichever shlokas you like and are applicable to you. Learn them by heart. and repeatedly think about it what is it meaning what is it meaning how beautifully krishna has said it so if you spend half an hour on a shloka and the message the message will be absorbed by the mind
and it will be assimilated. It will never leave the mind then. Vasana vilaye chetaha. When the vasanas get dissolved, shamyadi asneha deepavadu. Like a flame in a lamp where the oil is burnt off, it simply gets extinguished. In the same manner, the so-called mindness will dissolve and you will develop something called Shuddha Sattva, the pure essence of consciousness in you. Is the idea clear? Huh? Samaj me aata hai? Samya galoganat satyad vasana praviliyade vasana vilaye chedaha Shamyatya sneha deepavadu <clears throat> All these are subtleties. Everything has something to do, the only thing to do with your mind. That is why I repeatedly say this is a mento intellectual pursuit. Mento intellectual pursuit. Expected to bring about reformations, refinement and attunement in the very mind and intelligence themselves. That is the idea. You tell me you perform puja for 100 days. Will the puja have a direct effect on the mind? If you do it with devotion, devotion is belonging to the mind. The devotion will act on it, but not the puja. <coughs> when by repeated introspection, introspection and beautiful ideas are presented how the whole pursuit is and what is meant by promotion in it, elevation in it, expansion in it, everything is well done. And you know where you finally reach? Ha, such a wonderful state. This is a shloka I generally recite and explain it is from Dhanyashtaka, a composition of Shankaracharya. Sampurnam jagadevanandanavanam sarvevi kalpadruma gangam vari samastha vari niva punya samastha kriya vaja pragrita samskrita sudhishiro varanasi medini Sarvavasthidirasya vastu vishaya drishte parabrahmani. What a beautiful verse. Will you learn this? My dear girl, you should learn. Sampurnam jagadevanandanavanam. You get the meaning? Sari jagat nandanavan benjata hai. Sampurnam Jagadevanandanavanam You don't have to go to heaven. Whatever you see around, the entire world becomes a celestial garden. I recited Purne Manasi Sampurnam Jagat Sarvam Sudhadravaihi When the mind becomes Purna, the entire world is laden with nectar. Similarly, when you become divine in your mind and heart and intelligence. You only see divinity anywhere and everywhere. You have to touch your mind and heart. Penetrate into it if you want. Or delve into it. Bring about changes. What are the changes? They are not secular changes. They are not worldly changes. They are not elemental changes. All are psycho-intellectual, psycho-psychic changes. Sampurnam jagadevanandanavanam sarve kalpadrumaha All trees and plants are like the heavenly kalpadru, kalpaka vruksha. Gangam vari samastha vari nivaha Wherever water flows, you feel it is Ganga. You don't have to go to Varanasi. And take a bath there. Every, everywhere, water has come from where, you tell me? By the rains. And who caused the rains? 
the sea water vaporized became clouds traveled in the sky finally they shed so what is there in ganges water and what is there not in the other waters let your vision expand initially ganga is okay but you cannot always think of ganga and disparage the rest when are you going to reach a state of fullness abundance completeness gangam vari samasta vari nivaha punya samasta kriya all the activities that you perform equally become noble great holy and divine my dear souls are you not divine your body is born of the mother tell me what about the jiva or the soul in you is it born by anybody from anybody what is that like a spark of fire it is a spark of god if it is godly can it be contaminated ha huh? then which activities are you dividing as holy and unholy punya samasta kriya all the activities are equally holy vaja prakrta samskrta sudhiro whether you speak hot whether you speak softly it does not matter that speech is produced by the jiva and it is produced by the vocal system which you have not made have you made it so when the sound comes where will you look to is it your sound or it is a sound enabled by nature evolved by nature so both the prakrta and the samskrta both of them shruti shiro they look like they become like vedanta varanasi medini the entire earth becomes varanasi sarva avasthiti rasya vastu vishaya drishte para brahmani when you have a full perception of the brahmic presence the omnipresence called brahman then every state that you have anywhere you look at everything is revealing pointing to only the same omnipresent truth yeah iska saakshatkar ho sakta hai if you are a human it can be had any human bring me a thief i will make him a great knower i will explain to him that thieving is thieving is not good knowledge is the greatest persuasion for any human whatsoever when i explain a value in terms of reason propriety etc i always say it will create a twofold influence an emotional persuasion and a rational compulsion to accept it and assimilate it you must be able to tell him properly which thief will continue to thieve the moment he understand that what i do is not right he has thieved and brought some products suppose i thief them will he like it ha huh? make him understand that ratnagara was told affectionately if police had gone by the his side they would have put him in arrest but maharshis did not do it they enlightened him they spoke to him softly see this is a wonderful state wonderful state i will recite the words once again and stop sampurnam jagadevanandana vanam sarve vikalpadruma गांगम वारि समस्त वारि निवह पुण्या समस्त क्रिया वाज प्राकृत संस्कृत सुदिशिरो वाराणसी मेदिनी सर्वावस्थितिरस्य वस्तु विषया दृष्टे पर ब्रह्मणि लेट योर विजन बी लॉज इन द ओमनिप्रेसेंट ब्रह्मन देन ऑल दिस विल टेक प्लेस <clears throat> our doctor das again told me that i should explain that verse 
ಆತ್ಮೂಪಮ್ಯೇನ ಸರ್ವತ್ರ ಸಮಂ ಪಶ್ಯದಿಯೋರ್ಜುನ ಸುಖಂ ವಾ ಯದಿ ವಾ ದುಃಖಂ ಸ ಯೋಗಿ ಪರಮೋ ಮದ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಯೋಗಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಸೀ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಸುಖ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದುಃಖ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಯೋಗಿ ಈಸ್ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಈ ಸೈಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಆತ್ಮೂಪಮ್ಯೇನ ಸರ್ವತ್ರ ಸರ್ವತ್ರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿವೇರ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಐ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೆನ್ ಬೈ ಸರ್ವತ್ರ ಆಲ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ಯು ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ಲಿ ವಾಟ್ ಡೂ ದೇ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇನ್ ಯು ಸುಖ ಆರ್ ದುಃಖ ಆಲ್ ದ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಸೆವರಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ದೇ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಫೈವ್ ಸೆನ್ಸೇಷನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಟ್ರಿಟಲ್ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಟು ಕಾಸ್ ಸುಖ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದುಃಖ ಸೊ ಅರಿಥಮೆಟಿಕಲಿ ಡೂ ಯು ಎಗ್ರಿ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕಾಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಸುಖ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದುಃಖ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಸುಖ ದುಃಖಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇ ರಿಯಲಿ ಔಟರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ನರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ಲೇ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಓನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಸೇ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಅವೇ ದ ಐ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಮ್ ವಿಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎನಿ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಸೊ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ರಿವೀಲ್ಸ್ ಹೂಮ್ ಐ ಅನ್ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ರಿವೀಲ್ಸ್ ಹೂಮ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬೋತ್ ಈಕ್ವಲಿ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ಲೇ ಆಫ್ ಐ ದಿ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಕೆಪ್ಯಾಸಿಟಿ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ಲೇ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಟು ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಆನ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಅದರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ಹೂ ಎವರ್ ಈಸ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ಸುಖ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದುಃಖ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಯೋಗಿ ಈಸ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಯೋಗಿ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಹಾಂ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಗಿವನ್ ವೆರ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಪೇಜ್ ಬಾಬಾ ಹಾಂ ಓಕೆ Swamiji, we have a question from Ram Sengutavan Ji from Chennai. His question is, how do we transcend from the thoughtlessness or blankness state of mind to the ultimate truth or Brahman or consciousness as it seems to be extremely subtle, which can't be comprehended by the mind? Would you kindly clarify this in detail, giving some examples if required? Hmm. He has used a word blankness. This is the one word and the idea denoted by it to be gone into and understood. In the field of science everybody will agree that there is nothing like a vacuum. Is it not? As the vacuum is not there inside our body there will be no blankness also the entire wakefulness is wiped off and then you go to sleep can you say sleep is blankness huh? what do you mean by blank in the sleep are not the sleepers happy contented they are blissful they get up and then say i comfortably slept i comfortably slept the comfort was so much abundant and full that they never needed anything else see the poor man suffers from poverty in his wakefulness when he goes to sleep tell me whether he is poor what about the rich man so the sleep is such an infilling state such a fulfilling state how can you call it blank it is from the sleep that the wakefulness itself arises what is the theory of cause and effect cause gives rise to an effect whatever is in the cause that alone can be in the effect the effect is proportionate to the cause this is the cause and effect theory 
so if wakefulness has come from sleep whatever has come in the form of wakefulness should it not have been embedded in the sleep itself otherwise how can it come you look into a seed an ashwatha seed very small bury it it will sprout and that little seed is becoming a huge tree tell me where from it has grown this is the relationship between cause and effect so where can there where can be a state of blankness at all what is happening during meditation is people don't understand you are trying to trying to trying to make the thought process mark my words lighter and lighter feebler and feebler slower and slower what you are given to a fast pace i ask you walk slower so you reduce your pace i say still more still more still more no not at still more finally what will you do have you disappeared there the legs have gone so if the mind is given to thinking and the thinking becomes lighter feebler and slower and the thinking stops how can there be a state of blankness there when the walking legs stop do they disappear so whatever was given to thinking whatever had become thought that has dropped the thinking process and that substance is fully present there so never call it blank oh is the idea clear one more Ah, that we shall find see you can say the source of thought the source of all existences and expressions and to name that we have no word because all our words are taken from the object world these words how can we be we can how can it be effect how can they be effective in describing something different from the objects so we can say it is not this not this not this see <clears throat> ha darkness how do you say how do you say that it is dark you open your eyes and see the eyes can see only when there is light so when you see darkness other objects are not seen at least darkness you are seeing so is it not the minimum light that you see ha huh? so is there any darkness as long as it is visible light has got two properties to reveal its presence and to reveal other objects darkness reveals its presence but not other objects whereas light will reveal its presence and other objects also so out of the two properties of light one property is there in seeing the darkness so can you call it darkness again to examine whether it is so bring a light and examine whether the darkness is there or not then what happens huh See, our logic is wonderful, Baba. Everything is logical. Sri Krishna, by instructing Uddhava towards the last part, it's all reason, 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 reason alone. I was surprised. I was writing the commentary, meaning for it. So, Unnigushan Malaysia came to my, my to my side. So I said, Unnigushan, see. it's all logic and beautiful reason so there is nothing called blank my dear shankutavan get away from your mind from nothing nothing can evolve your mind is producing thoughts when the thoughts subside when the thoughts subside when the waves subside what happens 
you reach the vastness and the depth from which the wave arose similarly you reach the depth and vastness of your being from which on the surface thoughts feelings and emotions emerge so refuse to recognize anything called a blank at least you feel that it is blank so it is revealing itself that what is that blank why don't you think about whom you say about what do you say blank there are two possibilities when you get into proper meditation one is laya another is vikshepa laya means this kind of a state stupor oblivion or vikshepa means distraction when you have the laya laye sambodhaye chittam vikshiptam samayet punaha whenever you have dissolution so to say wake awaken it wake it up vikshiptam samayet punaha when the mind get gets distracted you have to appease and quieten it and then what do you reach yadanaliyate chittam naja vikshipyate punaha aninganam anabhasam nishpannam brahma tattada when the mind does not go into a state of oblivion nor does it get distracted it becomes it becomes nischala motionless and there is no abhasa like dream thought or other things at that time nishpannam brahma tattada the person attains brahma it is time so i will stop okay that brings the tonight session to a close we have um, another couple of questions we probably swami ji will, will answer those tomorrow swami ji will now conclude tonight session and we will see you all tomorrow for the fifth day of the retreat these two questions you received only now um one they actually they came in the morning swami ji we received them in the morning no no two more questions you said no one one question has come from ashish ji Oh. Ashish ji has just said. Then I should be told if it, he, questions he, were received earlier. This was then, just he just gave uh, he just gave it some. Oh acha. Now I cannot answer it. Tomorrow is fine. I sir. shall but it will be late. <coughs> okay. Shanta swabhava majaratmakam eka satyam sambitpadam nirupamam va Ah, no, no, no. Shantaswabhavamajaratmakameka satyam samhidpadam viga... Samhidpadam nirupamam kalana vihinam andar vihishya अंदर्बिहिष्टबहुधा व्यवहार्यमाणं तद्दैवमेव मम सर्वं अहं तदेवा शान्तस्वभावमजरात्मकमेकसत्यं संभितपदं निरुपमं कलनाविहीनं अंदर्बिहिष्टबहुधा व्यवहार्यमाणं तद्दैवमेव मम सर्व अहम तदेवा हरि 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 वी शैल हैव द कंक्लूशनल ओंकार ओ हरि हरि ओम दस जय गुरु जय गुरु